Hey, everybody, it's your girl, Charlotte, with, uh, who am I with today? Let me see. Um, you know, I'm Sisters Talking Natural Hair Business. I'm Locks Forever. I'm every woman, baby. But today I am here um, for Black Expats in Panama, and I am so <laughs> excited because I have with us Arena Best Gale. And Arena Best Gale is, to me, to me, when I think of Panama and I think of the most beautiful people that I have met in Panama, <laughs> and I, I'm serious, you are the first person that comes to, to mind, Arena. And, oh. and when I tell, um, when I, everybody remembers you, when you came to the, um, to the all white, all I had to say is you remember the pretty girl and they're like, yeah, the pretty girl with the flower in her hair. So... <laughs> It is such an honor to have you on um, the show tonight, and um, and, be, and to take for you to take time to interview with us because you are such a queen. And I just want you Thanks, to guys. introduce yourself and um, tell us a little about uh, Arena. Yes. Okay. About me. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for this invitation. It's an honor for me. You are amazing. Also, Charlotte, you are a great person, a great spirit, and we feel really, really honored to have you in Panama mm -hmm. all the time because every time you come to Panama, you bring positive stuff, mm -hmm. positive people, and uh, we feel blessed to have you. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much to give me the chance to share with uh, your friends and the rest of the world what we do in Panama, <laughs> what we're doing, and yes, uh, well, I am a Panamanian, Afro-Panamanian, a Afro-Caribbean descent because my family came from Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and I also have some Colombian and Cuba. And so I have a very diverse cultural and Caribbean heritage. So I feel really honored and blessed for that diversity in my veins. And cultural, um, my, my mother, she's from Colombia, my father too. So I, I, I born and raised in Colombia. Mm -hmm. Colony is one of the most important cities in America because it's the second most important logistic center in the world after Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So we have like mostly uh, a very important part of the commerce in the world pass through Colon. So it's very interesting. But also we also experience a lot of inequity mm -hmm. I, for my opinion, structural discrimination. So it's a very interesting place to visit because you can understand the uh, inequality phenomenon of the region. You will understand very, very well in that place. Mm -hmm. So yes, but we also have amazing people. We have all kind of professional and brilliant people that came from that province and I feel a part of that group too. <laughs> So yes, and we work hard to, you know, help to keep building the best version of this country. So I feel honored, and I and the I feel also very blessed because I have the opportunity to work uh, and promote the human rights around the region. Mm -hmm. I work in four continents promoting human rights, specific for Afro descendant indigenous women's and people that are being discriminated uh, historically. Mm -hmm. So this has been, this is part of my background. I am an MBA and in international relation and I am a lawyer. So that's gonna be like a, <laughs> a little, a little bit. Cake, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so that is awesome. And I, and I like that you told us about Cologne and that you mentioned the um, inequities. And because coming from the United States and a lot of black expats that are hearing you speak, you know, we are very much familiar with that. And what happens is because of the inequities, you know, people start putting a bad name onto the area and then have people, then people just, you know, you say Cologne and you say, oh, you don't want to go there. And that's systematic. And that is what happens in the United States as well. And so what we want to do is we want to broaden the 
um, awareness as far as Cologne, you know, with our, you know, black expats and let people go and see and experience and make their own conclusions. You know what I'm saying about it? So, um, so, and, and like you said, you know, you have a lot of professionals and good people coming out of Cologne. So now you live in the city, right? You live in Panama City. Yeah, I live in Panama. I moved to Panama 20 years ago, now 21. Uh, because, and this is very interesting because why I moved to Panama? I moved to Panama because I really have the desire to become a lawyer, but we didn't have the law school in Cologne. So I, I have to move to be able to go to the university and study whatever I want. So I, that's more of my history. The reason why I moved to Panama and I have to reveal myself in this place is because we didn't have the opportunity in our country, in our uh, province. Mm -hmm. So this is part of, you know, this, this is, I am one of the million of history, the same histories, you know, when we want to change our, our reality, we need to do a lot of sacrifice. So that's part of that. And, but yes, I live in Panama. I love Panama. Uh, Panama is amazing. The country is amazing. This is very important to say because I know the idea of this is trying to, to show or try to let know people a little bit of why Panama is so amazing. Yeah. And Panama is amazing because first of all, it's diverse. We have a we have diversity in all in every single way we can be diverse. Uh, so that is part of the rich of our country. We have all kind of culture in Panama, all kind of um, uh, religions, we have all kind of gastronomy, uh, heritage. We have a lot of things in Panama going on. And the, the, the fact that the government right now is trying to promote that diversity is very positive. It's been like 70 years that we didn't have the chance wow. since the 40s to feel proud of that diversity, to promote that diversity. Now we have this opportunity. For me, it's, for me, it's amazing. For me, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I can see you now. Yeah, you lose me a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I got you. Ah, uh, yeah. So for me, it's, it's very positive that we have this chance to promote uh, this diversity that is part of, is the most important part of the country. The country is beautiful. When we speak in terms of beauty, natural resources, locations, everything is amazing in Panama. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing that Panama has is the people. Mm -hmm. The diversity of the people, the beauty of the people. We are a very, uh, we have a lot of hospitality. We are very <laughs> kind and I like that we are happy people. We're one of the happiest country yes. in the world yes. because of the people, yeah. So I feel really happy to promote my country in this sense. So yeah, that's so, part of that. There are there are a lot of things happening, a lot of good things happening um, in Panama right now. Um, a lot of opportunities and moving and shaking. You want to share some of those um, opportunities that are happening now? Can you? You there? Oh. Charlotte. Yes, Charlotte. One of the upper, I really want to share this because I feel it's important to promote what the government is doing uh, because it's not always negative. It's, we also have positive things happening and I really want to share about that. Like one of the most important things happening is that the promotion of the diversity, as I said before, because we have the chance to create opportunity for all the groups. So Panama is promoting this diversity for indigenous, for Afro, and also will be the time that they promote other groups, cultural group, and they will have the chance to promote and, and do other kind of activities that help them to empower economically the, the communities. So I think this is very important. Mm -hmm. For example, in the Afro-descendant community, mm -hmm. the government right now is promoting the cultural tourism for communities. We have beautiful communities like um, uh, Bastimentos and Cacique from Portobello. We know Portobello is part of the immaterial um, cultural heritage of the humanity, which is very important in UNESCO, UNESCO, sorry. And 
this is very important, you know, because now all these uh, historical um, achievements that the communities got, we they can see the 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 result of all this effort preserving the culture, preserving the all the traditions and the ancestral practice. So it's very uh, positive and I, I would like to say that it's beautiful that the community can realize how powerful and how rich they are because the government is given, given them the recognition as the, we, you know that we are celebrating the international decade for afro descendant in, in the UN mm -hmm. and the OAS. So we, have, we are in the middle of the decade right now, but it's been positive because uh, many governments are working um, in different fields, and we have three main goals. First of all, is recognition for the communities. The second one is justice, and justice has, has everything to do with the all this thing of racial profiling, racism, discrimination. It's right to battle that injustice and how the justice system system behave with Afro-descendant people around the globe, around the world. And it's very interesting that all this uh, revolution, all these things that are happening right now, is it, it's, it's interesting because it's happening in this moment, in this context where we have to prove to the world that we are moving forward and that we are um, evolving mm -hmm. in these uh, topics. So it's very positive. And also other topic that I feel that is very important and all the third goal of this decade is development. So in justice, we have so much to do. We have a lot of things to do. It's a very hard work and we have to work together. Mm -hmm. But what I like about recognition is that the challenge there is that we need to start to recognize ourselves. Mm -hmm. If that is the first step. If we really want other people to recognize us, we need to recognize ourselves. We need to see the value, prove ourselves that what we are, what we have is important. And this decade is giving that opportunity, is giving that chance. And the other thing that I like is development. Through that recognition, the auto, the self-recognition, yes. people we feel empowered enough to start the development that our communities need. Yeah. We are used to think that other people are coming and they are going to change your reality, they're going to change your life. And we know, Charlotte, that is not the truth. Yeah, exactly. That is not the truth. Yeah. We know that we have to take control of our life, or our, of our destiny and of our community. So yeah. that is important. For me, I'm not seeing what the government has to do with this decade. It's what the people in their communities are going to do with this opportunity to see ourselves as the people we are. We are powerful, we are amazing, and can we, we can do whatever we want. So that is the, my, my, that is my expectation for this decade, and I really inspire, and I used to work many years ago, like maybe 20 years ago, I used to focus and work internationally. I did a lot of work. I work in Brazil, I work in Colombia, I work in many countries promoting human rights, uh, try to empower young leadership. And now I feel so confident of that they are so ready. If they are doing what they have to do in their country that I can feel, I can feel comfortable working in my own country and do what I have to do. And then I hope we have the chance to, you know, get together and meet, you know, have a big meeting where we can exchange our experience, yeah. our good practice. And I am looking forward for that. Yes. I want to say that, you know, the recognition and the work that we need to put in on ourselves right now in the United States, um, we are seeing like um, Roland Martin, um, who is um, an anchor, yeah, a black anchor. Um, he did a video this morning where he was like in tears the because we have early voting here. And a lot of times it, it, it is, it, you, you can't deny it. A lot of times we have really let ourselves down on election day. You know, black people have um, historically, you know, not come out over the last few decades and, and voted when it's so important, right? But right now, you know, he was in tears this morning because there's early voting. I think he was in Georgia 
in the polling place had opened up 27 minutes. And guess what? The parking lot was full and the lines were around the corner. And that made him cry because, you know, it, it said that we are getting serious. It's like we're, we're, we're waking up and we're saying that we have to move ourselves forward. And in, in the United States, you know, one of the ways that we definitely have to, what we have to do to make an impact is voting, you know, so that's a very big thing. Um, the one thing I also want to say um, is that the Black expats who will be watching this, uh, we want to come to Panama, like I've said in the video, I feel like this, Panama is so generous. I do. I just feel like Panama is welcoming. Um, Panama is generous. Panama has so many opportunities. You know, I've met so many wonderful people, but I just don't want to come to Panama and take from Panama. You know, we want to come to Panama and give, and I, I feel, I don't know why, I just feel emotional about that. We want to give to Panama. So what I want to know, I'm sorry, I don't want to get emotional. Uh, I'm sorry. What uh, I want to know is, what I want to know is when we come to Panama, how can we bring, like you said, we get together and, and, and we exchange ideas and culture and, and put our strengths together and unite and so how can Black expats coming to Panama connect with the Afro-Panamanian community to help to make a difference and help you with your progress as well? Oh, that's, that, that's so powerful and beautiful, Charlotte. Um, I really, I'm also like that. I was thinking yesterday that when I really talk about something that I care and I love, I always cry. <laughs> so don't be don't be ashamed. I'm I'm so honored. We feel honored that you are so connected with with Panama because right now you are part of, of our history. We are we are rewriting our, our history. So this is very important in your role in this um, redefinition is very very uh, powerful. So yes, I think that is very you know I, I will share something with you. Okay. I am um, Panama in the past. We used to have this division between the Afro Panamanians that um, heritage. And can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, it was, it was a little bit delayed. You said there was a division between Afro Panamanians and who? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. Okay, you said it was the vision, so go from there. Yeah. So I want to. I want to. Let, let me give me one chance. Can okay. you stop, okay. please? Yeah, because I. Okay. Yes. Okay. I will start. Off. Okay. So I will. Um, I would like to share this. When we used to be a kids. Uh, in Colón, we grown seeing like a, a lot of history about how our grandparents used to be separate because some of them used to be West Indians and the other one like Afro-Colonial, like people that descend from the it's, it's people from Spain that came in, in the past and all this, you know. So we grow with that idea that or oh, they grow, my, but, um, you know, my grandparents and some of their friends and that generation grow with the idea that they, um, they were different because they have like different backgrounds, ancestry, culture. And it's for me was a little bit shocking because I'm a combination of the two groups. Mm -hmm. So I always, wonder like why these people never get along get together you know some of them had the possibility because some of them were were working in the panama canal zone mm -hmm. so they have the the financial uh, resources to invest in the community mm -hmm. 
Instead of that, they prefer to leave the country and relocate or move to United States or other countries. So it's sad because so much beauty, so much potential, and a lot of generation didn't have the ability or the gift to see what they have. Yes. And now I see for first time in many years that this opportunity to work together, work together and build together is back, is now. Mm -hmm. So now is the time that people like SPAC, uh, Afro-descendant specifically, or other people, but I would like to say Afro-descendant people mm -hmm. around the world that want to build uh, a legacy, or want to build a, a wealth in other countries. It's a lot of countries in, in Central America that they can found communities that are ready to work with other people, people that give them the support, that respect their culture, yes, mm -hmm. but they are more open than never to build collectively. So I feel that Panama have a lot of opportunities in tourism and real estate, a lot of, a lot of opportunities. Also, we, we know that Panama is a very beautiful and tropical country, so we have a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. But the main thing, as I said before, is Panama just, in my opinion, we have an economical growth. We have an economic growth in Panama is, is big. Mm -hmm. But the real development of, development of the country is not ready. It's not ready yet. Mm -hmm. So this is when you can go to a country and invest in different areas and build wealth and build opportunities, create, create opportunity for other people, not only with money, but also with knowledge yes. and techniques. Mm -hmm. So um, I see that this is a, a good time. And I know we passed, we just passed the COVID. We're still in the COVID, struggling with COVID. Yes. But Panama is going to be one of the fastest country about to recover. Yes. From COVID. I'm I sure. I just read that today. I just yeah. read okay. that today. Okay. Is, yeah. That's is, true. Well, as a matter of fact, this brother named uh, Alonzo Bloomfield, I think, and he's actually in the Black, Black Expats group. And I think I was watching one of his videos. He does great videos on Panama. And he was talking about the, econ the economic recovery of Panama and how Panama is best positioned, you know, for a lot of Central and South American um, countries to bounce back, you know, and a lot of it has to do with the free zone. Cologne. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so that is good. Now you are part of an organization, the Afro Descendants. So yeah. is the organization open to um, foreigners as well, like, you know, to be members and to, to join? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, we have um, a different organization. I personally belong to the Afro Panamanian Forum, which is the, for me, the most important uh, collective of um, organization because the forum, um, you can, in the forum that, um, in the forum you can find different kind of organization. Mm -hmm. So this is for me the most important one because it's also the one that sit with the candidate for the presidential mm. or for the election uh -huh. to discuss the most important public policies and the future of, of the community. So for me, that is very powerful. Yes. Is for that me is at the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's serious. Is they are serious, very organized. Mm -hmm. And I really like they have different organizations around the country, like in Chiriqui. In Penonome, Cocle, Azuero, mm -hmm. Darien, Colón, Bocas del Toro, all the province. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are working in different areas like education, culture, different, different areas. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm really glad that they, that is happening right now. And I feel part of that change. We are empowering that organization to work local in the communities. And I remember when I used to be the, the director, the general director for the... Um, development of Afro Panamanian, I used to tell the people, you know, you need to be really, really strong because, you know, 
these organizations are the, the, the hope in the community. They are the real heroes in the community. No, not, not necessarily a politician. You know, these people that they don't need to be paid. They are not expecting nothing from people. They don't want to take advantage from people. They just do what they feel in their heart and they do a lot. Right. So I, for me, I have a lot of respect for the, for the leader and the activism that work in the communities and they dedicate their life to build uh, a very important level of consciousness in the community. And I'm happy to be part of that. I feel honor of every single leader I, to, to be working with. And I feel so proud of every single leader of the community. I feel proud and I feel honored yeah, yeah. to learn from them and join them in every single project they start, they build. And I, and I, and I feel blessed. I feel that I'm living a very important moment of the history. And as I, I, I can explain with words how I feel. I feel honored. Yeah. I feel honored and I feel proud of every single one of them. Well, I'm going to definitely invite them to, you know, we are coming uh, to Panama in May. Uh, between May 1st and May 5th, we are doing a taste of Panama, Black Expats, uh, expats Explore Panama. And, um, you know, probably on the last night, I'm going to try to have some of the Afro-descendant um, organizations come in and speak to the Black expats that are there. So, we can get connected, you know, even before we actually make the move, because there's a lot that we can share one with another. And so I'm excited yeah. to do that. Uh, Alfredo and I are members of SAMAP. Um, so we're also part of that organization. Now, I want to talk uh, briefly about uh, the reason that we decided to come in May was because May is Etnia Negra. And I yeah. wanted um, uh, the Black expats, you know, we're going to be going um, into the Cologne area and we're going, um, we want to be here during the Etnia uh, Negro so that they, so that they can um, really kind of get to see and connect with the culture, the Black culture of Panama. Now, in the United States, Black History Month is... February. So in Panama, it's May, Mayo, right? Um, so how long has that been going on? And can you tell us some of the things that we can expect to be going on when we get there in May, provided that COVID is taking a break? Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes it, Black ethnicity month in Panama is a very important time of the year. For me, it's one of the most important after Christmas and <laughs> wow. Yeah, independence uh, festivities because everybody is so into this Afro culture in Panama. It doesn't matter the origin of the ethnicity, they just love it. And the, the this is this have a reason. One is mandate by law, is by law. So we have a the law nine uh, of 2000 uh, promoted by Mr. Clara Richer. I hope that. If you come in May, when you come in May with the group, I will try to arrange. You, we can try to arrange so he can have a conversation with the group. Okay. Share his, his experience. And another person, that, his name is Elias Coley. Those, they, the, two of them, these two persons promote this law and they have the support of the community. So they work hard to promote this law to create the Black Ethnicity Day. We really have Black Ethnicity Day. Day. Wow. That is May 30th. May 30th. But it's, it's like the Afro descend, the Afro culture in Panama is so beautiful, so rich that you can have a day. You have yeah. you can have a month to celebrate. Ah, yeah. People is still, is still keep like doing things after the month and, and before the month. So we have like a, almost a month and a half or two months. People wow. celebrating having a festivity activities, all kind of things. And it's beautiful yes. what happened in Panama and happen everything. Mm -hmm. So we have parades and different parades around, around, the, around the country, like in Azuero, in Cocle, in Bocas, in Colón, everybody have a parade. So you have many black parades around the country. And we uh, have like a different festival. We have gastronomic festival, we have also like um, cultural, we have art, we have conference around the country. Mm -hmm. Every single school, need, they have to celebrate too. So yeah. they have to teach things 
to the kids. But now we are taking that kind of information that they provide in the school to another level. Because now uh, we are working to, uh, to, to create a law so they have to get the right information to teach in the school. The history. So, yeah, the history. So yeah. that would be good because it's going to be included uh, since first grade to university. So everybody will be proud of what the Afro descendant and the African, uh, you know, contribute in this country. So it will be really powerful. Yeah. So the other thing is that we are working to, uh, we are also working in, in different kind of activities. You can visit the country, you can see the difference between the culture because that is one of the most important thing of Panama, Charlotte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, Brazil is the second largest country in the world with most Afro-descendant population. Okay. Afro-Nigeria. But Panama is a very little, a very small country, but it's one of the most diverse country in the world in Afro-descendant culture, because we have all these, you know, we have all these uh, different, um, different groups that came from the, places. from the East, in the history, since the uh, colonial times, and we also have the railroads, we also have the, the canal, the yeah. French canal, mm -hmm. the, Pan the, the American canal. So we have all these people. So we are like the descendant of those people. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is how we preserve the culture. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting to come to Panama because you can, you can find anything, you understand? Yes. And that's one thing that I think is very powerful in Panama. So when you come in May, mm -hmm. you can see that, that, that diversity. Mm -hmm. You can see how diverse we are. If you go to Darien, you will see how amazing these people, these people are amazing. Right. They are amazing. How they cook, how they do everything in Darien. It's, it's yeah. very special. It's, they have practice that have centuries. They are really connected with Choco uh, culture, the Colombian culture. So it's really interesting. If you go to Bocas del Toro, if you go to Bastimento, it's like going to Jamaica in Panama. People yeah. speak English. They cook like Jamaican people. They are so connected to that place that they, I think some of them, they don't even have idea how connected they are with other countries in the Caribbean. It's like going to San Andres, for example, in, in Colombia. And that Bluefield in Nicaragua, you know, you can find that in Panama. If you go to Cocle, it's more like a very, very particular people. They have a beautiful culture, a, a delicious gastronomy. They are very ecologic. They are, they are very natural. They have a lot of organic products and they keep a lot of the practice uh, that they used to, the ancestors used to, okay. to do. So it's very interesting. And of course, Colón, Colón is like the combination of everything because in Colón, in the past, in uh, Bocas del Toro, they, they, they didn't have hospitals. So a lot of people from Bocas used to go to study and, and stay in Colón. Mm -hmm. So it, we have a very, very strong connection between Colón and Bocas del Toro. It's almost, it's, it's very similar, just at two hours from the city. Wow. And it's beautiful. Next time I will go to you, I will go with you to Puerto Velo so you can see Venas Azules, you can see La Huerta. Yeah, you can see the tunnel of love. You can see other places. I'm, I don't know if you know. We go the Black Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah. We're going to take the group out there. Yeah, but the Black Jesus is just far. Is you know, it's just far. It's is is Portobello is amazing and also very a very interesting place that you can include in that tour. Charlotte is Palenque, Santa Isabel mm -hmm. had the first free territory of the Americas. Wow. So you will Palenque. see, Palenque. Yeah, in Palenque. yeah. So that, that you will, they, they have like a, these people that for me, they are like griots that keep the history, the tradition, it's amazing. So yeah. when you go to Palenque, you, it's just like you travel in the time, you're on time traveling because wow. you, you can learn about Congo culture so, I mean, you can learn so much about Congo culture and you know that is very important for UNESCO 
right now. So we have a lot of legacy. We have a lot of important things happening right now in the Afro-descending culture. And I think in May will be really advanced. So you will enjoy more things that what I'm already sharing with you. So yes, I, we just I, I would like to be here it. to uh -huh. show you some, some things, yeah. Well, you know, I want to say, um, I want to say quickly that one thing that I was very impressed with um, in Panama is that during uh, Etnia Negra, yeah. everybody participates. See, in the United States, for the most part, African Americans participate in Black History Month. I mean, we are the ones who mainly participate, but what I thought was so interesting was to see the non-Blacks in Panama with their dashikis on and, you know, representing and celebrating the Black history. Yeah. And I thought that, 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 that's huge. That is huge. And I like the fact that everybody's celebrating it together because yeah. I think we're quite there in the United yeah. States, to tell you the truth. And we have all of February and sometimes we've had it for so long and I think that some of us take it for granted. But yeah. we, are, we are even at this point right now in the United States trying to do the same thing that you're doing to get the true black history into the school books. You know, I mean, it's like, we don't know our history. And, and, and so much is happening, you know, here with Black Lives Matter and everything like that. And you got, you know, you got white folk and other folk, you know, just looking like a deer in headlights, like, oh my God, what's going on? This has been happening. I'm like, yeah, you know, for hundreds of years. And all of a sudden, the black bookstores were selling out of books. Because honestly, to their defense, Black history is truly not taught in American schools, in schools yeah. in the U.S. It, we have been very, you know, we, our history has not been taught. And so a lot of people, all they know is that we were slaves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They gloss over that. So, you know, I think that we have so much in common. We have so much in common, and that's that's one of the things that I'm trying to, you know, get people to recognize as well. But um, but I, you know, I could talk to you all night, and we may have to get together and do this again. And I definitely, you know, hope that you can come out and meet our group um, when we come. But you know, just in parting, you know, if you want to give us any final thoughts? Um, we're open. This has been a great discussion. Well, uh, again, thank you, Charlotte, for this opportunity to share. And you say something very interesting because we, Panama, we, I think we are one of the only countries in Central America I think in Latin America that, that have this experience of segregation in the past with the silver and gold roll. So I think that like when a SPAC, uh, when they come to Panama, a black SPAC come to Panama, they don't only find culture, diversity, and everything, but they also find a very interesting country with a past that is fascinating. Mm -hmm. I think you can learn a lot from Panama. And, and we, Afros, in Panama and in the United States, we have this similar history, this similar past. Yep. Yep. And you can see how we've been evolving from the pain and use that pain and turn that pain into power. All the things that are happening right now in business, how people are working in e-commerce and other areas, inventing, creating, and, and only in that part. We, we are also have a lot of science and a lot of different uh, people that are professional that are working in different, different and very important field that we don't even know about that because all this, in the, you know, all this battle that, keep or keep the system to keep us invisible. Mm -hmm. so, so when you come to Panama, you will enjoy good food. You will see opportunities for business. Mm -hmm. You will meet great people, yeah. but also you will have the chance to reconnect with your own past. Because mm -hmm. even when it's in different country, is is we have that past in common. So yeah. we can see how we evolve in, in that and, and what we in, and also what we can do. 
Yes. And maybe that will be a good reason to people understand that we need to work together yep. as a family because we are a global family. We are a family that came many years ago. And I know people, some people don't like to talk about this because they say you are like uh, essentialism. You know, they say that when you are like thinking that you are African or whatever, that you don't feel part of what we, what, where you live or what you are right now. But we are connected to our past. Mm -hmm. That is the reality. So yeah. we need to learn from our past and we need to keep moving forward as Sankofa uh, philosophy say. Okay. And we need to, so yeah. So in order to move forward, we need to understand mm -hmm. and we need to know the past and we need to also seek for the chance to heal with other people that experience, they have the same experience as us, they have the same past that we have. So it's very important that we take this chance that globalization is giving. Of course, it's a lot of it's a high price for globalization, but we need to focus on what is what are the positive things that globalization bring to us. Yes. So what what is the positive? We are connected right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have COVID, but maybe we didn't have COVID, we didn't have the chance, yeah. and we didn't go serious like Urena and Charlotte. Let, we have to sit together, and share. What is happening in Panama? How are we gonna do it in May? Whatever. You know, so so this crisis is giving us the opportunity to yep. create, to be more, uh, to innovate, mm -hmm. and to be the best, mm -hmm. the best, yes. the best version of ourselves, of ourselves. So I feel happy, yes. and I will be glad to welcome all your group Aww. and share. With them. I hope be able to cook for them. So let's see. What <laughs> Yeah, they can see the oh, cook, guys. That is awesome. Well, listen, yeah. you yeah. let's see, let's see. I, I will try to give you a surprise. Okay, I will, I, you will be surprised. So I will okay. be, I love, that will be, I love so for you and your group. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. But listen, uh, uh, Orena, you know, I know how busy you are. I mean, you are so busy, and again, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to spend with us. The information that you share um, is from a perspective that is different from anyone else I've interviewed so far. And I know that the group is just going to absolutely love it. So I thank you for all that you do, your dedication and commitment to just Afro descendants period. And um, I look forward to seeing you soon. I miss you. Hugs and kisses. <laughs> so I'll see you soon. Okay. All right. So this is Charlotte Van Horn with Black Expats in Panama Facebook group. And I'm so excited to share this interview with you guys. Um, follow us on Facebook. Join the group. And also follow, um, subscribe to the Locks Forever page on YouTube. Like I said, I'm every woman. So it's going to be stuff there about Black expats in Panama, hair, business. That's right. I'm every woman, baby. So I'll <laughs> see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye, Orena. Bye. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye.